if you've lived life long enough, that you know that life is filled sometimes with loss and with grief and with hardship and even the death of people that you love. And yet Paul is writing to encourage the church in a situation like that about those that we've lost and those who have gone on to be with the Lord. And he says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. And there's this great and wonderful thing that Paul is saying. And, and yet at the same time, uh, sometimes when we get removed from maybe death or loss and time goes by, we actually sort of maybe forget the real beauty of what Paul is actually saying. And that's what I love about art and poetry because it draws out that story and really helps illustrate and explain that to us and remind us of how good something is that lies ahead. And so in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah actually does that with poetry. And he tells a story, and it's beautiful in the way that he's prophetically saying something's going to happen this coming day. And it's a story of women who have lost their children. They're gone. They're dead. And, and he says, you know, can a, can a woman forget her child? Of course not. And yet they're gone. They're dead. They're no more. And, uh, and, and she's lost her children. And yet these women one day hear the voice of their children. And they're like, Where, where's this voice coming from? And they, and they look out and they see people carrying on their arms their children, bringing them back to deliver them to them. And for them, they're like, it, 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 this isn't, how is this even possible? That, that, that they could come back. They're gone. They don't get to come back. And yet this beautiful imagery of, of restoration, of children being restored to their mothers. And that's the real story and the beauty of the gospel is that God works a work that is just unimaginable and unbelievably beautiful and unbelievably restorative. And so we do not have to have no hope or maybe sort of limited hope, but we can have great expectations and great hope because of what God has promised us in Christ.